Hello people, in this video we want to look at bone anchored hearing aid, BAHA, bone anchored hearing aid. Where are we? We are looking at the rehabilitation of the hearing impaired. In that we have completed, um, in hearing aid, we have completed conventional hearing aid in the previous video. Now we want to look at bone anchored hearing aid. Conventional hearing aid means what? It will have a microphone, amplifier, receiver. Basically it is uh, helping in um, air conduction, right? Guys, if you remember, in conventional hearing aid, you're putting something in the ear canal or something here, right? Some uh, kind of instrument here. So what happens? It is visible to people and also uh, it uh, it can cause some wax and all that. So basically here, what are you trying to target? Air conduction. So via the canal, the air, uh, via the air, the sound has to reach the tympanic membrane. This was the whole logic. So the conventional hearing aid was trying to bring the sound to the tympanic membrane that was that's what its job was but let us say the person has some issue with air conduction and you want the person to hear via the bone right via the bone directly you want the information to reach the inner ear so that time what you'll use you can use bone anchored hearing aid right bone anchored hearing aid this is nothing but baha baha so when will you give this uh, baha so if, if we give a BAHA, the sound will come till here, right? And this part of it should be perfectly fine. The sensory neural hearing should be perfectly fine. He must be having some kind of conductive deafness. Then only you can use bone conduction and then you can use the uh, hair in the hair cells and then the new, uh, nerves as usual and transmit the signal. So sensory neural part should be perfectly fine. They should have, if they have any conductive deafness only, you can use this bone conduction, right? Bone conduction via what? BAHA that is bone anchored hearing aid right was was that what it is basically these people know should have some problem where they don't they cannot wear the conventional hearing aid that time only they are going through this and remember their sensory neural hear, uh, hearing should be perfectly fine so you can see here let's look at some images and understand first what is this this is a bone anchored hearing aid. There's a titanium fixture here, okay, and titanium abutment. And then here you have some sound processor. This has sound processor. See, conventional hearing aids did not have sound processor, etc. But this one has sound processor. Okay, let us look at this. How it looks when the sound processor is attached to the abutment. Are you able to understand the parts here? The sound processor is sitting outside, right? This is the abutment and the titanium fixture. So the titanium fixture is innermost looks like and the sound processor is outside. Okay, we understood something more. And then let us look at yet another image they have shown here. They have implanted what the titanium fixture looks like. Here you have the abutment and here you have the sound processor which is out outside. The implant is inside. Okay, this makes sense. What have they shown here in the other photo? So the same thing, they're showing the sound processor sitting outside. Very good. We have understood, right? It's a sound processor here. Okay. So let's read more about this and understand bone anchored hearing aid. So as you understood here, you're directly giving the information to the cochlea. You're bypassing the external auditory canal and even the middle ear is being bypassed. You understood that part, right? You are bypassing the external auditory canal and middle ear, you are directly going to from the outside world to the inner ear, the cochlea. Look at this, this uh, whatever you are putting this titanium fixture inside right into the bone that is called as osseo integration. You just write some fancy word, putting it in the bone, you are putting a titanium fixture inside the bone of the person like here, osseo integration. Interestingly, they will wait for two to six months for this to fit in and uh, wow two to six months they have to wait then only they can do this uh, put this abutment and then the sound processor to the abutment so people who cannot wear this conventional hearing aid due to infections or something for those people this will be good or for some people who have absent outer ear right they don't even have an outer ear right or a very small outer ear micro otia right or they can have canal atresia and these people if they are having single sided deafness 
then also it is fine. But remember their sensory neural part should be working fine. I am guessing at least in one of the year, what do you see? Right? In the single sided deafness, remember they were using something called as a earlier they were using CROS that is contralateral routing of signal from one good ear. See, uh, we have seen this already. Remember? So, we saw that if there is one bad ear and one good ear, one bad ear and one good ear on this side, right? What they are doing is they are putting the microphone in the bad ear and they are putting the receiver on the good ear. So, this was what they were doing contralateral routing of speech for uh, single sided deafness. But now they prefer the bone anchored hearing aid. So, here we will write B A H A instead of contralateral routing of signal. What is good about BAHA uh, uh, when compared to the CROS? Guys, look at this. Um, what they are saying here, the CROS, right? It had poor performance and aesthetic conditions well, considerations were limited. So, what happens to BAHA? It removes head shadow effect, allows for hearing from both sides of the head and uh, it substantially improves speech recognition and quiet and noise compared with the CROS aids. So, it substantially improves the Baha substantially improves this. So, let us put Baha information here. Um, the CR contralateral CROS they do not like. Okay, we will just make it red. Poor performance and all that is there. Now, they like BA. Got it guys? Bone anchored hearing aid. Uh, we have looked at some amount. But you have understood what the disadvantage of all this everything is, right? It is a surgical procedure. It is not like conventional hearing aid that you just put it. It needs a surgery. The surgery is typically performed in a single stage in adults. You understood that they have to put this uh, titanium fixture and wait for 6 months up to 6 months for this osseo integration. Right? At least 3 months they will leave for osseo integration uh, and then only they will fix this abut, what is that? Abutment. Abutment. And then only they will put the sound processor. You understood, right? And if I am not wrong, they are saying surgery 1 they will fix put the titanium fixture. Okay, then surgery 2 they are saying after 3 months you can say they will connect the abutment through the skin in uh, to the fixture through th through the skin to the fixture. I am guessing the skin has grown back over this titanium fixture is it? So, the skin would have grown then through the skin through the skin they will put this uh, okay. So, there are two surgeries looks like there is a second stage operation done after three months. So, now do you like this BAHA? Okay. Maybe it is useful for people. Anyways, there are two surgeries here. You have to put the titanium fixture, wait for three months, do the second surgery, connect the abutment through the skin. Uh, you connect the abutment where to the fixture and then you will attach the sound processor. Very good. So, this covers BAHA guys. BAHA bone anchored hearing aid you have understood. Right, um, this is put in people who have conductive deafness and they cannot wear conventional hearing aid. So, we are done with uh, convent, uh, we, we are done with bone anchored hearing aid, guys. We are done with this. We are done with this. We are done with this. We have to next go to implantable hearing aid, vibrant sound bridge. Let us look at that in the next video.